I think we can. Fine for me. Okay, we are on Zoom. We start and uh, when our coordinator, we start on the other in case. Yes, let's start. Sure, go ahead. Okay, Paula, um, me and Giancarlo, I think we are we are ready. Um, Paula would like to start to introduce. Uh, yeah, we try to to go, to be to go not so slow, so we can. Uh, Go on. So, um, as you know, our session would be about uh, local action plan, but I would like to start with um, an heritage enhancement. That is our topic, uh, but I would like to start uh, saying a few things about uh, uh, Bond of Union and specifically our uh, work uh, in, in Capo neighborhood. So um, really uh, short, we are a social cooperative um, and uh, mostly we work in the educational sector is our main field of activities and we work also in uh, European cooperation uh, specifically. Uh, since 2016, we, we started, so our work focus more on, uh, on the Capo neighborhood because we, we saw so the municipality. Oh, sorry. I have some. Could you do you listen to me well? I can hear you very well, yes. Me too. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so um, what's the um, why we 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 want to underline this aspect? Because uh, uh, I would say that uh, before I, we we start to work in this neighborhood and specifically in this space, um, yeah, our work was not so um, located in a specific context. But since then, uh, we uh, focus all our activities and work in uh, in in this neighborhood. Um, as a key activities, as you can see, I, uh, I, I just underlined the three main ones that are, first one is about networking, so creating a network with the local organization and the local authorities, uh, so municipality, the local administration, but also school and university, with the general purpose of make the neighborhood better. Uh, it, also refer to, uh, for example, making a report, but also giving uh, um, feedback uh, and uh, ideas and proposals for the neighborhood. So giving specific indication to make the neighborhood better. It's, uh, I would say, one of the most uh, challenging and not uh, really uh, a successful part of our job because, uh, yeah, they are municipality is not really reactive. So um, sometimes we had the feeling that the work that should be done from them is uh, done by us uh, and, uh, and so on. <laughs> the second uh, field of activity and key activities are the learning opportunity. I say on field because uh, uh, we realize um, workshops uh, uh, with schools and with students from university as well, or with young people in general. Um, with the purpose to create, so there are uh, specifically for, uh, for the neighborhood, so in which they uh, actually explore the neighborhood and create synergy with, uh, with locals. So it's like we use the, the neighborhood as a learning field in which the, the, the participants are, are uh, acting, uh, learning from what they discover. 
And the third the main uh, uh, field of activity uh, is, um, we, we call them uh, participative actions. So it's uh, based on uh, um, constructing dialogue that uh, we are, I hear my voice. Oh my God. Now? Fine, I'm, yes. I'm very confused. <laughs> where, where we are and where we, but what happened? Okay. So the third main uh, activity is about uh, um, participative actions, uh, generally said. So what we do, uh, it's about, uh, it, it, it's a very long-term process because it took a uh, uh, few years uh, to build uh, a constructive dialogue with the residents and the stakeholder of the neighborhood. Um, what's um, mostly so what we do, with, we, we build a relationship with them. The relationship, uh, I mean, uh, uh, not, um, yeah, the relationship in which they are uh, referring to us uh, uh, as, uh, as a local facilitator of uh, participative process. So they refer to us to give us, uh, to tell us stories, memories about the neighborhood, but also to um, give us uh, ideas, their ideas. I hear someone speak. <coughs> okay. And, uh, okay. <laughs> Do we have any questions? Not what I said? What no, no, it's, it's very clear. There's, ju there's just background noise. Is yeah, that... yeah, yeah, yeah. There is someone speaking in Spanish in the background. Uh, is that, Whatever. that's not you, that's not your, in your room. <laughs> no, 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 I'm Palermo, so no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Because all the others are muted, so. But yeah. Carry on. Okay. Maybe someone that came. Uh, ah, okay. Maybe because uh, is Oscar in. Uh, Oscar. Ah, okay. He's in the other. Uh, <laughs> Oscar. Oscar, come with us. Oh, okay. Maybe I say. I am here. Okay, Oscar, we are in Zoom. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am in the Zoom. Uh, I think. Ah, we um, so please stop the audio in whereby. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, if no one have question, we we continue. So, yeah. um, if Paula, you finish the. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 We can hear you fine. Cool. So um, we are. Um, as Paolo introduced um, our work, uh, I, um, I would like to introduce this concept that then we apply with also with other, with other, we in our local uh, local labs and in the part of the of the, the theoretical part that we develop. So this connection between the local action plan or the action plan approach to the heritage enhancement. Uh, so why we um, why we make this connection and uh, why in the urban context? As 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 you probably know now that if we are working together since uh, since a lot, uh, we are working uh, and from Paula's presentation we are working in a specific urban con in, uh, in a specific neighbor that is really characterized by uh, cultural heritage, ancient and also in some way modern. But not only our neighbor is like that. A lot of urban contexts. Uh, are uh, like that and in this urban context is really we, we can see really 
um, sometimes a huge uh, cultural heritage not fully valorized or completely left uh, to be destroyed by time and things like in the photo that you see. Um, what came out to to us to organize to as organization to citizens to stakeholders that work in such neighborhood uh, what is the main sometimes a question that come out is that uh, there is there are possibility and there are uh, to, to valorize this cultural heritage we use the local action approach to face this question and also to face this uh, as a bottom-up uh, awareness um, concept to arrive to uh, turn this vision of valorize the, the cultural heritage of the neighborhood into reality or concrete action. So the action plan in this sense is a, is a tool. Uh, um, divide the, the, the phase of a theoretical local action plan uh, in uh, in seven phase or in seven step, let's say that um, the most important is the is the first one or one of the most important, because in the first one you do a local context analysis. That is, uh, in uh, the is the most important the the important part in which you understand uh, the issues, but also the potentiality that. Uh, an Eggburg, a quartier, a district, an urban cottage in general could have. There are several methods that you can uh, use that you probably already use, like the stakeholder mapping or informal or formal meetings with stakeholder or residents. There are more formal um, methods like the focus groups or there are official, official reports that you can, could uh, refer to uh, come out with some data. This is what we normally do and what we do normally, um, what we have done normally in other uh, participative action like Paula described. For example, there you can find a link to an action that we call the Spazi Quartiere and another one that was called uh, Idea for the this Idea for our this Idea, idea per il Capo. Uh, and this one in particular, we, we, we idea to uh, develop uh, together with the citizens, uh, with their own idea, uh, the district come out. And I want to show you a video that is both an example of uh, Idea per Capo, but also of our inf an informal discussion with the local residents uh, could let emerge a, a cultural uh, heritage valorization possibility. I hope the video starts. I have prepared. I hope you can see. Okay. Can you see the video? Yes, I think. Yes. Okay. So um, I try to be short. <laughs> in, uh, in this video, uh, these are what we call uh, voti uh, capelluzze in Palermitano or voti shines. Uh, I find the translation, I'm not sure it's the correct one, but I think yes. Are um, uh, religious, um, have a re uh, this, um, this voti shines have a religious meaning, but not only, are also uh, iconic of some building, uh, represent uh, a family that have done a building, and that is, it's really typical of the South region, I think also in Spain, uh, uh, you can find, but not all, I see some, sometimes also in France uh, and so on. So uh, discussing with this, uh, one of our local facilitators come out, there's idea that this uh, Capelluzze, but the shines could be valorized. And from this discussion, uh, a lot of idea came out and also um, other citizens like this one uh, in, uh, in the video that are interested to uh, re-evaluate, to give a new value to this uh, cultural heritage. In particular, this man was, was interested because his father take care of the, of the 
of the votive shrines. So it's a, a sort of come or religious, uh, but not only also paganic, uh, <laughs> uh, pagan, uh, common, uh, common uh, of the district. Uh, from the, the, the votive shrines uh, discovery, we discover also uh, but things like this, like for this one in particular, it's a votive shrine that was already reevaluated uh, or uh, recovered by L. Um, and in some way, I don't know, it's the word uh, restructured <laughs> by a local artist that uh, put um, this image of uh, um, an Indian Madonna uh, or an Hindu a mix between the Madonna and the Indian. Uh, divinity on uh, on uh, about shrines really left uh, to uh, not valor not valor valorized um, um, then um, what is interesting that is in this type of inform what is also interesting in this type of um, informal understanding of the district uh, investigating the cultural ideology is that come up also other story not only the first one with the one not only the one with you start for example this but also for example at minute uh, we we, we mm, we discover other story like this one. So when you 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 go with the, the camera and you start to ask uh, about a, a topics and other topics always related to cultural heritage come out. For example, the story of this man that was tell us uh, from um, a girl that uh, don't want to be recorded, but tell, uh, also let us enter in. Um, in his house and tell us the story of his father. Yeah, a lot of things. This is just to give you an example, I, I hope was clear of what could be the potential of an informal uh, discussion with the, um, with, the, with the residents when you do a local context analysis. In our work, it's really common. Uh, then, the other general step of uh, that followed this one, this first one, uh, of course, are the objective or more important type of change we want to make happen. That are, of course, a direct consequence of the first step. Uh, different methodologies can be used, um, and mo most of you, of course, know, like the logical framework, the like canvas model, the theory of change, depend of the the context in which you are depend of the uh, of what you want to, to achieve which are for example people you work with if they are um, confidential if they are um, if they know uh, what is a canvas model if you think they is appropriate or no and a logical frame of, and so on from the type of change that uh, we want to make up and comes the third step that um, of course, each action, if change, if object, it must be related to an action. So uh, in the logical process, process on a local action plan, a plan of action uh, that mm, answer to the, to the question of do we get there, it's really essential. Then, of course, the execution timeline. So the timeline that is necessary uh, related to the action objective and uh, change we want to make up and the resources and eventually the barriers that is the fifth step and uh, important the final outcome so in this context uh, we come back to the local to the neighborhood with uh, an outcome in our case for example it's really it's really important uh, also this video for our, for us was a sort of come back to the local in, in this case Gianni that um, in the case of the votive shrines video I show you uh, was for example the video uh, that was uh, important to give back uh, what we have discovered together related to the change we want to make on the uh, valorization of uh, the votive shrines uh, and then the last part but it's also transversal is the monitoring 
uh, that could be done, of course, in a lot of way, like the change impact analysis that I mentioned, or other 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 method. Uh, then I give you an example of what uh, we call a local action matrix, but you can find also on the on the web. Uh, it's an example, but you can of course adapt this to to each of uh, to to different or several uh, project. Or uh, then, why this uh, introduction to the local action approach? uh because in we uh in some way we we, we use this uh, this concept uh this approach in the a couple of labs that uh, Giancarlo Paola and uh, the other will uh, will um, will explain you later in uh, in some minutes uh as you understand our neighborhood is full of cultural heritage and uh we recognize this uh, this potential, but we, and we also link to the fact that the private residents or uh, residents um, with limited uh, education and so on can, in some way, uh, benefit from this from the valorization of the local heritage and and the world neighborhood. Uh, so our uh, question that um, to which we we arrive to the couple of, our main question to which we arrived to and change with which we are ready to couple of labs are, was how to leverage the local heritage to enhance social uh, inclusion and this challenge inspired the design of the couple of labs uh, Paula, you can yeah so i want to um, uh, underline an aspect of uh, what Giorgio said first of all uh, the memories we refer to are uh, uh, so we, we do not do this uh, work because we are uh, nostalgic and we want to be uh, stuck in the in the past the memories Giorgio referred to and the memories we uh, are uh, in contact uh, by talking with the residents are alive so they are, um, and also the cultural heritage George referred to is not just uh, uh, buildings and churches and monuments, is also all this immaterial uh, um, part of heritage that is, uh, uh, that is, is very alive. And this is uh, uh, one, I think, one of the main characteristics of the neighborhood in which we we work. So there are stories, memories, uh, folk uh, that is uh, part of the neighborhood. It's like another, uh, th they are like uh, the memories and the stories are like, uh, uh, I don't know, people also living in the neighborhood. So it's, it's very interesting, this aspect. It's very interesting, the fact that uh, let them talk about that. Uh, it's like we recognize them as a depository of knowledge. And it's very important in the process of empowering uh, fragile adults. Uh, the neighborhood which we refer Capo is a very deprived neighborhood uh, in terms of uh, educational level, of economical level, of an employment, uh, of uh, children drop out, uh, of uh, drug uh, uh, and criminality and so on. So it's, uh, there is this very, um, I would say, um, difference among uh, the richness and uh, the uh, poorness because it's a very poor uh, neighborhood. So th there is this uh, high, high contrast. And so it's important that we recognize them as a depository of culture, of local culture. And uh, in this sense, also they feel uh, more empowered and they feel more uh, um, also, they, they reflect about their past uh, with a vision on their future. That's what uh, is very interesting for, uh, for us. Sometimes the past is inspiring, so it's let them, uh, uh, first of all, uh, realize uh, that the things now are not the same as before, and that, um, so there are many things that could be um, changed. And uh, in the same time, they start to question themselves ab about what can be done to, to change it. Or maybe also they could find uh, interesting ideas coming from the past. So they also, um, something that could be reconverted in a different way, readapted. So wh why to, to lose all this uh, richness uh, and to throw it away? Um, a very important part is also that we, our work is, uh, um, 
want to prevent the touristification of this area. Capo is the private neighborhood, but is in the center of the city of Palermo. And the city of Palermo in the last years, in two, three years, has been really touristified. Um, with that, I mean that the many aspects of our local culture are uh, turning to be kind of uh, uh, stigmatized or stereotypized for tourists, and also there is uh, an, yeah, an interest on uh, in terms of uh, um, yeah, buildings, houses, uh, even in the Capo neighborhood. So you see a lot of uh, bed and breakfast and uh, um, structure for tourists that are uh, in the same street where there are very the private uh, inhabitants. We want to contrast this process in the sense that the, the local residents, uh, we, we think they should be part of uh, any valorization of, of their neighborhood. Um, this to contrast the, the, the fact that they should just, uh, uh, you know, just be thrown away or uh, just uh, stay here, but not have nothing in contact with what is happening uh, around. So in, in this uh, sense, uh, um, as Giorgio said, we repair to, uh, we refer to the, to the, valorization of the local heritage as a way to promote social inclusion. Um, so about our labs, um, so they started uh, in November and December, despite the, the very uh, challenging uh, uh, COVID situation. Um, we had participants, uh, especially in the partnership uh, uh, with the Department of Architecture of the University of Palermo, but also researchers, local activists and art historians. The group were, was uh, really mixed and this gave a lot to the, to the labs uh, and also it was, uh, um, I, I think uh, for, for, the, for the COVID the situation, uh, there was a really like energy and the willing to uh, give more than uh, to, 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 to this uh, workshop. So the participants were really, uh, really join and uh, give a lot of efforts on it. Um, so the labs were divided in two uh, main uh, phase. Uh, the first one was led by Claudia Speciale, that is an archaeologist, and she will explain the first part, and the second one by Giorgio Gallitano uh, from the Department of Architecture. Claudia. Claudia, the audio. I'm sorry, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you and uh, good afternoon. Okay, so I basically I was in charge of starting this uh, analysis of the of the neighborhood, trying to to find all the possible uh, um, uh, materials to do the, the lab uh, that were linked to the cultural heritage of the neighborhood. As uh, Paola already said, and also Giorgio, the cultural heritage is, uh, um, I, I think, a very specific and identitarian feature of the place. And even if, of course, it is not very, very much valorized. So, uh, for, for example, many of the people that joined the, um, the, the laboratory, they had never been, for example, inside the, the neighborhood. So uh, it's like uh, it's very close to the to the center, very close to the main um, cultural heritage site of the of the city. But many of the people also from Palermo uh, have never been inside the neighborhood. So uh, and of course it is not valorized valorized enough for 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 the people that live inside the neighborhood. Um, so uh, this, uh, I think that this way, this uh, this path was really useful to to start valorizing the identity of the of the of the neighborhood, and um, basically, what we did in the in the during the meetings at the beginning, especially, was to start to make them familiar, like the participants familiar with the place and the people, of course. Uh, so we, we split uh, most uh, all of the meetings between uh, uh, activities inside and activities outside. Also, of course, because of the, of the COVID uh, situations, we didn't want us to stay too much, uh, of course, and follow all the rules. So basically, we, we tried anyway to give some, uh, um, some information 
with frontal lessons, not uh, never to to to. I mean, always kind of a thirty minutes uh, meetings uh, um, showing what what are the most important uh, cultural heritage um, sites of the of the neighborhood, and uh, helping also uh, them with some games or uh, anyway interactive uh, activities that uh, were uh, uh, useful for them to start focusing. On what were the main questions for the for the for the neighborhoods, so that's how basically they chose themselves uh, two main topics to to develop uh, during the, the the laboratory also during the second part, and the two uh, main topics that they chose were the religious cults, as uh, George also before showed, um, the identity of the of the place is really. Um, I mean, the religious identity is really important, this side, but it, it is also very mixed. Uh, so basically, you, you really find a lot of uh, syncretism, uh, like the, the shrine that Giorgio showed, maybe it's like a symbol of how religion is, uh, is lived within the, the, um, uh, the neighborhood. But there are also many places that, for example, are not accessible to others. So basically, they were really trying to get uh, not only what kind of cultural, uh, uh, of, sorry, of religious sites are within the neighborhood, but also how they uh, relate to the population of the neighborhood. So if it's close, uh, close uh, uh, cult, uh, cult um, religious um, centers, if they're open to the, to the, also to the other religions or not. So it was especially about this that they were uh, like um, looking for information. The other group, focused on the, the, the toponyms. So basically they were interested in understanding if uh, especially the names of the streets were related to what they, they used to do there, if they're related to what they're still doing there. And, um, and this is also linked to the uh, like bigger, huger um, topic of uh, stratification. Uh, this word was very useful for them, I think, because uh, uh, it helped them also to understand um, how things are really layered in the in the neighborhood. So the historical um, identity of the of the neighborhood it can be really read through different layers, not just in time, of course, but especially in uh, in time. And um, and so the toponyms that are still today characterizing the the streets. Um, are very interesting because they uh, they can tell us some stories, some stratificated stories, of course, also of the of the past. And starting to work on the toponyms, they also started to work on what kind of artisans and what kind of people used or, or are still working in those places. So it was a very good way to relate to the local people and and start uh, getting uh, information about what they do basically during the day so how they they employ their time and how they are also related to the place according to the job that they have um so yeah we can go on i think to the other slide please okay thank you um so what did they do uh how did they collect the the information about these two topics uh we uh decided to use a mixed um, a mixed method, so not just, uh, um, of course, collecting information by books, internet, or, or anything like this, uh, but they, of course, involved the local people. Um, it was, I think, uh, very, very interesting because it, for some of them, maybe it was the first time that they were like making interviews and um, after some days, they were finally really familiar with the places and also sometimes with the, with the people. So they went to make interviews uh, maybe once, two times. Um, so this was really the, the way that they started collecting information from, from really the, the local situation. And um, they chose some uh, key points, some interest points, we, we call them. So they had to select among the many places, for example, for the, the cult places are, of course, several, especially uh, churches, but not only churches. So they really needed to focus just on three, four sites, because if not, it was really too much. The same for, for the streets, for the toponyms. They finally selected the only three or four streets 
um, the ones that they thought they were the more the the most significant to explain their uh, um, their uh, their path their uh, their project and so finally they put all this information uh, creating two digital maps where they had all the links for videos photos and uh, description of the places they had to show it of course to the other uh, to the other um, to the other participants and that's how they also started the activities of the second part of the lab so basically this was all um, a, const a construction like the, the base um, and they showed also to all the people that were not present in the first phase they had to show everything they have done like to to make it a, a sort of continuity also with the second part of the, of the laboratory so if you have any any question of course i can answer now or later if you want um okay hi i am uh, don carlo i am a landscape architect and uh, i have a phd in uh, urban studies I mainly deal with the social inclusion process and the participatory planning in uh, city, cities and driven uh, urban regeneration process. I, I, in this experience, uh, we are uh, talk, uh, that we are talking uh, about. Uh, I helped the participants in the elaboration of the action plan. Yeah, according to the topics we identify in the analysis phase. The, to do this, uh, we use the two tools. Um, Giorgio, you can go on. Thank you. Uh, SWOT uh, analysis and uh, model canvas. There are two tools used by uh, in uh, business environment. The first one has been part of urban planning, but the second, uh, the second one is the, the result of my teaching and action research in uh, experience as a part of my work in, uh, within the Department of Architecture. The first one, um, has been um, the structure sorry, of the uh, canvas uh, model is the result of um, uh, my work uh, with the, um, the students of the department. Um, and uh, this is a tool for describing, analyzing, and uh, designing in that lead uh, change action. It's uh, helpful to translate change goals into a process. Uh, we have adopted uh, multiple, uh, um, sorry, Dodo, you can go on. <laughs> oh, okay, this is the difference be, uh, between uh, a traditional uh, uh, canvas model in uh, business environment and uh, the um, uh, model uh, that uh, we uh, adopt in uh, what watch. Go on, please. Thank you. Uh, it, um, so the first of all, uh, and uh, at uh, the same time, uh, we look at after the target group and uh, our counter network of actors as a key resource to start any action. Uh, then we look at, at the, the value that uh, underline the action of the change that uh, we want to do. One uh, thing to keep in mind in the, is the economic feasibility of uh, every choice or action. Uh, for this reason, is a multiple uh, center driven uh, tools because uh, in uh, the same times we look at these uh, four um, main uh, um, topic or topic of uh, 
um, every action. Um, go, uh, no, to fill uh, in the model canvas, uh, just answer a few simple questions. Uh, for example, uh, the value uh, provided uh, um, concern uh, on what topic I uh, we want to leverage to achieve any uh, kind. Uh, instead, the K resource. Um, can be uh, recognized as uh, O, C, or uh, people as uh, experts in a particular uh, uh, file that uh, uh, help uh, us to, to do the action. Um, Giorgio, you can go. Okay. Um, now we propose you to do an exercise, an exercise with us. Uh, try to describe through the model canvas that uh, we propose a strategic action that you want to do in uh, your network. Uh, later we'll discuss together about this. Any question about uh, doing this? It all looks very clear. Okay. Giancarlo, provide me a PDF of the Canvas model. I think I can share with you also in the chat i don't know if it's possible no not really mm -hmm. we giorgio vuoi provare a condividerlo su zoom slide or open. Non è possibile inviare il file, quindi... Ma su quale piattaforma stai provando? Metto il... Um... Puoi provare a mettere il link di... Zoom. Eh, ho anche il link del... Ti sono caricato sul drive. Eh, sul, su, sul drive, per carità. Puoi provare se ti condivide. Mm. Sì, sì. No, no, ma... Lascio quella là, l'ultima slide che è nel... Ok. Che tanto... Ok. So, so I left the, the slide open. As reference. So how we want to do this? Um, it is clear the exercise, everything how we want to do. We, we have some time to... Giancarlo, abbiamo quanto tempo per farlo? Vuoi dare altre indicazioni? Quanto? Non lo so, ditemelo voi. Sì, 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 va bene. Non lo so come vi siete organizzati nelle altre... 15 minuti va benissimo. Okay. 10 minuti, Perfetto. anche 10. So we, we come... If everything is clear, we come to your consideration. Uh, of course, you don't have to develop the wall Canva model. Uh, it's just to, to think... Uh, about this tool and um, maybe you want to add yeah, maybe referring also yeah to the context uh, because also we want ah, yeah. a bit to connect with the Lorenz. with Lorenz activity so last time you uh, told about a specific uh, context so the idea is uh, to move on uh, starting from the short analysis of the context to start to think about uh, some of the main aspect of the canvas. So in this case, uh, Giancarlo, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, mostly the key partners and uh, the target group. 
so um, that you would like to refer if you want to develop a local action plan in your area uh, or in the area you are interested on doing uh, uh, an intervention the type of change so and uh, uh, the um, and what and 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 so the the main uh, what the, the the fourth one he proposed the, the cost uh, the, the cost and source of funding so how you think this uh, this uh, um, plan could be supported and of course the target group you refer and the and the key activities uh... key activities yeah sure <laughs> so there, there are just few main aspects but uh, referring to the the context uh, you, you can just it's it's uh, interesting also for the others to listen how you how you yeah how, how yeah you develop uh, really fast in 10 minutes uh, an idea of an action plan by considering this main aspect maybe, okay. maybe just just to to recap and make sure we understand the exercise well we'd like us to think of our own activities preferably one we discussed last week with uh, lorenzo and yep. look at activities target groups types of change and costs yes and is that yeah it? is that yeah. an order is there an order to do it or mm. that um, is a better start from uh, target group and uh, you are partner and your the key partners. partner, key partners key also. Partner. Okay. okay. So target group, key partners, key activities, type yes. of change. So the main idea you want, what's your purpose of your local action plan? Really short. And uh, <laughs> cost of the activity source of funding. So also really short. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is a steam session. The 10 minutes yeah, you said, right? Yeah, it's a steam session, 10 minutes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Maybe 15 months soon. No? Yeah. <laughs> okay. See you then. See you then.
Shall we? I think we can start. So if we want to have some minutes to discuss, tell us how much are confusing. <laughs> We can start. You want to start, Jim, or some of the other guys? Dana. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, I can start. Um, I basically did the exercise on what I to I talked about last time with uh, Lorenzo's exercise. Um, and that is an, uh, a project in the neighborhood here in Brussels about electricity because it's so straightforward that it fits the, the framework quite neatly, I think. Um, in terms of target group, uh, there's uh, users of electricity, there's producers in a second phase, and then there's local residents in as much as they don't, they don't overlap. So three distinct groups within the neighborhood. Um, in terms of key partners, um, First of all, the groups I mentioned, the locals should be on board. And interestingly, I think the strategies of uh, uh, listening and talking to local residents you mentioned earlier are very close to what we did. Uh, although the subject was not heritage for us, but electricity, but it's interesting how the procedure is quite close and the outcomes are very similar. Um, in addition to locals, there's uh, industry actors, distributors, producers, providers of electricity. There's uh, government agencies with climate targets who, who uh, see benefits in it, so want to get on board. And there's also research institutions who currently are um, feeding into policy to uh, change the energy policy at a local and at a multinational level. Um, the type of change we envisage is um, very humbly replace the current model of electricity production with a more local and inclusive one. Um, it doesn't get any bigger and the canvas needs to be huge, of course, to cover all that. Um, but uh, it, it puts a target very far in the future, which then breaks down into smaller bits. Uh, of which we've made some on which we made some progress like involving key partners. I think there's a, there's a working coalition there now. Uh, there's the production of electricity as an activity and that's starting, well, it started actually in November. We actually started producing, transforming sunlight into kilowatts. Um, then there's a, a creating a community of producers and, and sharers of electricity. And that's what's happening now. So we're building trust and creating a group and a community and um, the next activity will be with that community pool exchange or share electricity. Um, in terms of cost, I think this is quite an interesting exercise because it's, it falls apart in the setup costs, buying solar panels, buying uh, all the equipment that comes along. And there's, a, there's an, a sort of a permanent investment into the back office and to make it fun. And then there's um, uh, the, the running cost of buying and selling electricity. So three types of costs we identified. The sources of funding, uh, putting solar panels on roofs could be done by individuals on their own roof, by house owners if they don't live in the house. Um, um, could be supported by public subsidies. Um, there is in Brussels a, a green certificate uh, plan which allows for some leeway. Uh, and the last one, which I think makes this particularly interesting, is that over time uh, the overproduction of electricity can be sold to the grid. So providers will buy it from our community. So there's a, a permanent source of, of income. Um, this is a very, very quick overview of the Canvas model. Um, I hope I haven't startled you. I think it's okay. Is this what you had in mind or was I completely on my own there? Giancarlo is okay. 
Yes. <laughs> Giancarlo is okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes, is uh, the okay. Um, uh, I ask you if uh, you do you expect the support from a local uh, institution administration in uh, your project? From local? Sorry, I missed that word. Uh, administration, local administration. Um, the public yeah, bar is such. Uh, very much so. There was very early buy-in um, uh, from the uh, local councillor local councillor responsible for the climate plan up to regional government and all the way up so very quickly they see the relevance of experiments like this so we've had quite some support okay. we're only missing the european level but everybody does i think okay thank you i clear and you are um apply well the uh, process and the scheme of uh, the structure of the canvas model in uh, every part of uh, it and uh, is clear the uh, um, uh, rapport from each point of uh, your um, scheme or uh, model. Well, it's a dynamic model, isn't it? It's reiterative, so yeah. you have to yeah. go back to it every time. But uh, this is an early, uh, we do similar exercises quite a lot, so it's this is an early stage one. Yeah. And it gets better the more you do it, of course. Same with log frames and things Giorgio mentioned before, of course. Yeah, of course. I think um, Canva, yeah. it's in this sense more, uh, more, more useful. Might be logical framework, but it's more technical, so in this mm -hmm. case. Mm. I think you agree also. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Is uh, the 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 logic of the model is uh, making a circular, uh, a logical circular uh, reasoning about your action, your uh, objective over uh, our our plan. This is mm. uh, um, uh, um, a model who. Uh, uh, you can adapt in uh, every phase during the uh, the process because mm -hmm. when you start, you don't know the um, difficulty of uh, your work, and uh, you can you have to uh, remodulate uh, every action, and this is. Uh, um, tools uh, you uh, that uh, can uh, help you in uh, uh, reorganize the work plan totally yeah so there's a back and forth between timeline and this and yes thank you thank you <laughs> thank you so another one voluntary Maybe a Chinese volunteer. Yeah, Chinese. Beep, can maybe the last time you did a. Uh... Oh, ants. Yeah. <laughs> Real <laughs> vehicle. Real vehicle. <laughs> the sound of vehicle. Uh, okay, so we yeah, Vic, Dana, and Oscar. I mean, it's voluntary. <laughs> of course. Volunteers at no, Voluntary, <laughs> but you have to. Oscar, you can play it. So. No, no, no. I, I'm very confident. I'm very confident with uh, Canvas. I use it a lot. Uh, I, I make my own Canvas for my uh, projects. I think this adaptation is very, very clear. For me, it's uh, a good tool, a very Thank good you. tool. I not work it uh, with the questions of Jojo, okay? <laughs> because my day is very, very... Uh, angry uh 
I'm, I'm trying to come. Um, but uh, th this is this is a very very good tool. We 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 make a translation sh for sure, an adaptation for our local apps. You think it's an open uh, resource in this sense? Of course. Creative Commons for sure. Okay, so it's oh, also oh, in, uh, in line <laughs> with the with our main project concept. So what what we think also to use a resource that is free and Giancarlo in fact adapt and me also I adapt in some way the local action plan approach I invent in some I use some in some case other and so we always do uh, yeah. this type of things in our laboratory. If if you send me all the relation of uh, uh, adaptations and creations of origins, I I can see them. Okay. Giancarlo, then maybe send to you. I okay. will give him the email. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Great. Maybe while we wait for another volunteer to come forward, could I ask another question? Just to fill the void. No, <laughs> no it um, refers to the beginning of, of your presentation and particularly what you said, Giorgio, you're collecting, um, just, you're collecting um, uh, local data uh, when, in your context analysis. And I was wondering, I've, I've become to know your group as, as uh, being very involved and very good at communicating what you do. Now, do you also communicate that part? Do you make it public uh, more in a sense than make it accessible for those who want it? But do you uh, broadcast it? Let me put it that way. Uh, okay. Yeah, I explain uh, in short, uh, short terms uh, due to the time. Uh, yes, but we, we start to do that. Um, we as i say i i we give back also to the to the people by broadcasting in a, one of the multiplier event some of this video if it, this is your your question uh not that particular one that i show you uh but we we give this back to the um, local community in some case for example um for example that video particularly uh was made with the with Gianni the the, the guy the the old man that is uh, it's not old the the man that is in um, that that showed to us uh, the potential of these uh, uh votive shrines uh so most of the time uh we do this with them we 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 show them we they know the the the, the locals know that the, the video is online uh, or uh, we use also to valorize some of their um, local uh, local stories and we upload in um, a tool that is called uh, community atlas in for another project that we develop also with lorenzo i can give you a link uh, and also in this case it's experimental it's really experimental but also in this case the let's say the, the community uh know what we are we are doing the part of broadcasting should be really interesting in uh in uh, in uh, in a lot of way and as i say i we start to do already um with really really good uh in terms of the of feedback from the people really good feedback it's of course in the context which we are working really experimental <laughs> and uh, difficult to to communicate to them but but it's really give a lot the, the, re the reason why, why i also ask is because it's so contentious um on the one hand um from my experience people are proud when they see their films on on youtube and even beyond um I remember in Be Learning, uh, Oscar and his group made a film that even made it to regional TV. So that's big achievement, of course. 
but on the other hand there's also these privacy issues and and uh you, you don't want to just vulgarly spread spread everything everywhere so there's this tension you absolutely absolutely for example and as i said uh this video i really made with the people i'm not a video maker uh for, and also the photos everything we um, in some case i asked to some of them if they wanted a part is in um in the video and uh, one guys for example that tell us a really uh it's really complicated sto the, the story of his life super complicated some parts then ask me no no this one no uh cut okay and um yeah it's an interactive in some way and also uh i reflect with another uh, person about this it, it could help to uh destigmatize uh the what the other people out of the of the of the district thinks about uh, our district in particular, but in general, every neighborhood that faces this type of situation. Because are them that describe what <laughs> are the value, as Paula told you before. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's great in this sense. You, we mm, can, it's possible to develop a lot uh, starting from that. From that. Uh, very interesting. And um, it's maybe something we can explore further because I know also in Tessere uh, Lorenzo had the same issue, so it's an interesting topic. Yeah, really, really. And it's so, uh, yeah, we think about that, in fact, with Paula and um, Giancarlo to use this concept, and Claudia also to use this, um, for example, to uh, use this atlas that I share for other projects and also the, to, sh to use video or photo or memories so we will really valorize what we have discovered in this OpenCCP and the other project relating to cultural aid as valorization uh, with the people through media, by using media also. Brilliant, thank you. Um, are there any people still stuck in their canvas want to come out? Or does everybody want to be left alone? <laughs> They're now <laughs> going from... Does anybody still okay. want to share yeah, their maybe, light? Yeah, maybe we can uh, <laughs> we can leave it open. I mean, if you can, if you want, then later to share with us uh, the Canva, we can uh, we can do also later on. Uh, I mean, if you want, for example, to work with your colleagues on it or with your team, and uh, I don't know if you don't want to use it, <laughs> it's fine too. It's not uh, under the <laughs> you start to ah, yeah, be start to be not, this is one of the the guys I'm talking about before. <laughs> you can find the video on the atlas. This one today is a pretty mm. happy. Uh, okay, just just to finish, uh, it's the last slide. I, I don't show you the la the slide I just put on the chat. Uh, for if there is still someone that listen, the, the educational resource, uh, the educational, the curriculum uh, module four, it's what we are discussing today. Uh, for the couple of open labs, we use an hashtag, uh, so you can find in our. Uh, social media content, uh, ah, photo, and, yeah. Yeah, and we are uh, starting from OpenCCP, so we start to call this uh, Cup Open Lab, and uh, we will, uh, so we think that is uh, actually, as it is uh, an open lab, so uh, we want to continue, so for us is not, 
is, didn't finish with the labs for OpenCCCP. We are applying now for other projects, for uh, other initiatives, but the idea is that uh, all the different projects and initiatives that we are applied um, will be related to GAP Open Lab. So that is to continue this process of having uh, students uh, um, interacting uh, with the neighborhood, so learning about the neighborhood, helping uh, so us to discover new ideas and uh, interacting uh, with, uh, with, the with the residents in uh, participative uh, action. We are now working on a project more specific in the artistic sector but uh, so with the outcome uh, should be like um, events uh, and especially using uh, all the different uh, narrow streets and courtyard that are uh, in our uh, located around our space so we will uh, continue with the cup open love mm, jim you ask what you think about this i, I don't know if we had like what uh, uh, or the other, if we want the, the valor is uh, like you know in a, in, a, in a district like like us, uh, like we try to explain an egg that is that have these religious really features, but also uh, I don't know in Italian it's pagano pagani I don't know it's religious with mixed with um, um, yeah pagan and, uh, and tradition. Yeah, all mixed up, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, Santeria, this type of stuff. Um, do you have experience of that in other projects? Uh, because I think it's really our contest. So I think it's, as Claudia said before, Paola, everyone, I think it's one of the most interesting cultural heritage stuff we can work on. So what, what do you think about the other? Um, for us, it's, it's very much the mix of religion, particularly in London, the mix of religions, I think. Um, I think there's um, 35 religions recognized in London who have official, officially their own holidays, uh, going from the Rastafarians to the Zoroastrians. So uh, the, the imagery is very present. I mean, a, once you start to see it, um, and then not to mention the Freemasons, who are also a form of religion, as in the sense of being not a religion, but... Um, so, uh, it is very present. I, I think we try to avoid it, as we try to avoid many cultural um, uh, aspects of identity. Um, as we, I, it's, how to put it, it's so essentially what we do because we try to avoid it. Is that clear? We try to overcome these, these conflicts just by uh, focusing on another issue. If we talk about electricity, it's just in part to have uh, um, Jews and Muslims and Christians around the same table. Um, so uh, I think it's very interesting what you are doing. I think in London, the area where I worked, it would be very difficult, very divisive. You see, uh, people would, would make claims of... of uh, of un unbalancing one religion against the other, even if you in the pain aspect. So I think it's very, very interesting what you do. Uh, it, also in terms of learning from each other and how cities take shape in other forms. I don't know how, how that would work in, in Berlin, Wiebke. Yeah, I, I also feel like it's com more complicated because I feel like religion is a very private topic and I know that for example in the area that we explored there actually is a is a big Baptist church and they're having like a hospital in that area um, but you wouldn't recognize it if you don't know it so there definitely is some impact of religious communities but it's not that visible it's yeah I think it's hard to measure if you don't know about it Okay. We, we of course we don't work on the religious topic. It's something that it's emerging, and also different type of religious that are in the district, of course. Like the um, an example is the the image that I show you in the, in the video is is um, in fact it's an Hindu also. It's not only a, a, um, a Madonna, and it is. Uh, 
it's also used in the street art uh, this connection to the religious it's also used in the street art in the district yeah, the, course, all the street art in the district is related to religion. So there are there is an artist that is uh, so th that's also interesting because uh, you find other uh, street art example in, in the city, but uh, in Capo is uh, is pretty like a characteristic of the neighborhood. The street art is uh, religious. So there are all these Madonna and Jesus, uh, uh, but also it's like uh, they are like uh, telling what the people think. It's a bit like the yeah the soul of the neighborhood, and uh, they are like also complaining if something uh, is not good and, and so on. <laughs> do do I remember that right, Paula? That there is also a, a mosque in the neighborhood. Two. Uh, yeah, two. Two. In fact, is that the topic that emerged? Yeah. Too. Yeah, because uh, I worked in a neighborhood in London where there was a, a an uh, old Christian church, Huguenot, who came a synagogue in the early uh, late nineteenth, early twentieth century, and that's now a mosque as well. So that covered the whole ground of. of uh, but also uh, the district, of, uh, the region of the cup, maybe uh, Claudia and or Giancarlo could tell us more. The region of the district is also. Uh, going in the past was uh, Ar Arabic, maybe I don't remember really. Was part of the old Arabic city, so you know it's uh, a <laughs> In the in the um, workshop of Claudia, or the stratification of memories and stories, it's uh, uh, really interesting. It, it's evident this process, this cycle of cultures and stratification. And do you see remnants of that in the buildings, in the built environment? And of the, the, yes, the, in the topography of the neighborhood, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, it's nice. And the underground. <laughs> Do not mention the underground. <laughs> it's another city to discover. Okay. I think... Uh, we we both we we annoy you a lot with Capo for today. <laughs> it's a pity we are not uh, actually doing the training here. It would be much more fun and it would be really funny to have interesting to have you to us you here. We are trying to make Next any time. <laughs> Next time. A digital inside in Palermo. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Shall we wrap up? Um, thank you. Too. This was, um, um, it's a very good insight in the way you work. I mean, it's very instructive. And what's becoming also interesting, if you see the different approaches, that there are a lot of differences, but increasing similarities as well. So, as you said, it's a real shame we can't meet physically because that would have. Uh, these are things you should discuss over drinks and not over. Um, uh, an unstable internet connection. So um, it's a real shame. Uh, practically, uh, Vipke, I think you can close the recording. And um, uh, also, how shall we? Uh, can she just?